and welcome to another budget and leggy video now we have a 2010 ford fusion 2 and it's an automatic and we're having a, a lots of different problems now all i know is the woman was driving along absolutely normal all of a sudden the car just stalled cut out and wouldn't restart now she's had it home for a few weeks because i think she was debating whether to get a newer car or sell it or keep it or whatever um also a couple of weeks before this happened a light keeps coming on the dash saying uh rear door open and obviously then it says gearbox uh, transmission malfunction and starts flashing and stuff so it got brought to me on the back of recovery lorry i think a few other people looked at it i'm not sure but essentially it started for me off of the recovery lorry so we need to recreate the problem and we're going to use the old diag gun going to use a screen record on it and we're going to see what happens now so foot on the brake here we go transmission malfunction will it start no won't start let me get you in on that i hope you can see that what it was doing to me before though this was flashing on and off kept saying uh, transmission malfunction then it showed you the n then it showed this was flashing the little gear light was flashing but that's not doing it now but it's not starting now you can hear the fuel pump come in but it's not starting now it says n and oh, now it's okay yep yeah, there we go so that's uh, our problem so what we're going to do we're going to do a screen record so you'll be able to see what I'm seeing. Just moving the gear stick and nothing is happening. So we're gonna to go to transmission control module. We're gonna to go to recodes. Now we've got clutch position sensor. Now, this being an automatic, um, obviously we're gonna have, you know, something to control the clutch and to control the gears. So I just wanna go, before, like I said, this was flashing and it's not doing that now. Um, so we'll go to stream data. I wanna see, if, does it think it's in gear. Does it think, what do we have to? Transmission actual gear. All right, so it's recognizing the actual gears. I'm moving the gears now, and as you can see, gear position, drive, neutral, off. So when I go into reverse, on, reverse, on, neutral, off, neutral, on, reverse. This is in now drive. Can we select the gear? and then automatic right so that oh and it's saying the transmission is in neutral so it's recognizing the transmission is in neutral but i can't hear it selecting so if it's saying clutch position fault i'm guessing it obviously needs to press the clutch down when i press the when i press the brake I should be able to then select the gear and I should be able to hear it kind of clunk into gear. So I can't hear that. So let me go to the front of the car and see what we can see. So it thinks it's in neutral. So you would assume it would start because it thinks it's in neutral. But obviously the clutch isn't actuating. So I'm guessing it has to kind of go through a self-test first. Maybe the clutch goes down it's realized it hasn't gone down 
So, now I know we can do like a relearn for our clutch, um, but I don't think that's the issue. So let's go to the front and see if we can see anything. Now we don't get, well I don't get many automatics in and what I can kind of see, just move this out of the way maybe. Now, I can see a couple of motors on the gearbox. That's all I can really see. I don't, is that a motor there? This must be the TCM. So what we'll do first is we'll just do the old wiggle test. Okay, it's still saying transmission fault. I know you're not going to be able to see me, but all I'm going to do the TCM is just wiggle the connections. I'm just going to tap the motor. So I've got a very small pin hammer. I'm just going to tap the motor, see if anything happens. I don't know if the motor's stuck or sticking or... cycle the ignition okay nothing happened there just gonna turn the ignition off just tap it again do the old wiggle test turn the ignition back on Aha! Can you hear that? Boom! It started! Right! It started! So, we definitely have an issue with that TCM or motor on there. Because all I did is give it a few little love taps. All right, let's just turn it off and turn it back on again. I haven't reset any of the codes. I haven't done anything like that. Now, no lights come on. If I press the clutch down and actually put this into reverse, hopefully you can hear that. It's actually selecting the gear for me and it's making like a thud. All right, let's see if it starts again. There we go. There we go. Making a thud again. Go into gear. We can select second gear and first. Fully automatic. Neutral, kind of tiptronic again. I can hear that thudding all the time. Okay. What we need to do is we need to get this on the lift and we need to see what's going on with them. Have we got a loose connection? Have we got, I don't know, let's just, let's just see. Right, so we've kind of, well, we have recreated the problem. A few little love taps with a very small hammer and it seems to have kicked it back in. Now, I was kind of hitting it and I did wiggle the wires. So what I did, I don't know. Uh, that could also explain why when it came off the back of the recovery lorry that it actually started because maybe the bouncing and stuff of the recovery lorry as it was coming down here maybe did something to it and kind of thingied it but what we're going to do is it looks like I could be wrong but it looks like we have obviously a control module which is our TCM for our gearbox and then we have two motors on the gearbox which I'm just presuming are for changing gears and then we have what looks like another motor 
bolted onto the TCM and underneath coming out of the motor it looks like there's a pipe which is the hydraulic uh, clutch again I'm only guessing from the top and the hydraulic clutch is worked by another motor so what I'm presuming is as you start the car or put it into gear as you put your foot on the brake obviously it must do some sort of self test maybe it quickly presses the clutch just to see if everything's okay and when it was doing that before the clutch wasn't engaging so maybe it, it knew on the sensor and it threw up a code because when we looked in the live data the gearbox was in neutral so it wasn't as if it was stuck in gear and it says i'm not starting the gearbox was, was in neutral which is always good to look at the live data because that'll give you a, a way to go if it's stuck into gear an automatic won't start and sometimes you know you could have just parked it and the way you turned it off it could have kind of stuck into gear and sometimes you can actually rock them and it comes out again and it's not an issue it's just the way you kind of stop the car and i didn't know if that was maybe an issue here but as we can see it's in neutral so and when i'm moving the gear stick i can physically hear a clunk and i can see it on the live data and also on the dash it going into gear so i'm not really concerned at the minute about the two motors on the gearbox I'm concerned about the clutch motor. I think it's a clutch motor, we'll see. And maybe that's an issue. It's just not always, you know, pressing the clutch in. That's what it looks like. We're gonna get it on the lift and we're gonna see, sort it. Right, this is what I don't like to see. I can see clips taken out and I can see what looks like new tape wrapped around here. So that means someone's been at this before which is always a bad thing because you don't know what they've done or what they haven't done. Now this looks to be actually fairly quite clever. Um, it looks to be, I could be wrong, but it looks to be more or less the same gearbox and Ford have just stuck a load of motors on to turn it into an automatic gearbox, which in some ways is quite clever because a lot of automatic gearboxes are controlled by solenoids and stuff like that. And when they go wrong, they're internally in the gearbox and they're basically, you need to take it to a specialist to get it reconditioned. With this, if we've got motor issues, well, hopefully we can just buy a motor. So actually, in some ways, it could be kind of a cheaper fix. So yeah, I kind of like that. But what it looks like is with the two motors on the gearbox, which is here, and we've the TCM and a motor bolted on the side. But what's coming out of what looks like the side of the motor, must be some sort of gear up there pushing on a pin, I'm guessing. This is the clutch reservoir here. So, now there is a special learning procedure for this if you need to bleed the clutch and stuff like that. But again, what it looks like is I can undo this reservoir and hopefully, can I separate it from everything so we don't have to do any bleeding? Is that possible? I'm not sure yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this tape off and I'm just going to see if I can see anything. And uh, I'm going to uh, take out these connector pins I'm going to see if there's any bent pins or any loose connection or anything like that I'm going to do all that first and if I find anything I'll turn the camera back on I know what you might be thinking well why don't you do powers and grounds and stuff like that because at the minute it's all working 100% it's only really when I tap the motor that it, it kind of uh, well it wasn't working until I tapped the motor and it started working so I did move the wires here at the top just like this but it didn't really do anything it's after I tapped the motor that's when it started after I cycled the ignition so and everything's working now it could still be a problem down here with a wire but I'm just going to go to the obvious sign first and just check all the pin fitments and stuff like that before I do anything else and it looks like we're going to mostly have to take this whole thing off and see what's going on now I've got a bit more information now she took it to uh, a Ford dealer which she actually doesn't realize I do a lot of work for the Ford dealer uh, when they can't figure something out or they don't have the equipment, they bring it to me. This went down to the local Ford dealer and they've been messing with it. As you can see, I've got it all stripped now. This was just hanging off and it was out of a few clips. All this is fine. There's no worries, anything here. They, they said they couldn't figure it out. So they're just basically going to charge you 2,000 euros to fix it. And she said no, which is fair enough. But what they said they did do is they charged the system. That's what she said. Now, the only thing I can think of that's done is basically like bled the system uh, through the computer, which is the clutch, which obviously did no good. Now, these motors at the minute, they're appearing to be working absolutely perfectly. 
This one, on the other hand, which you just can't quite see, just there, is our clutch. So what I'm going to do is, I'll obviously tape all these back up properly, but I'm going to take off this unit here. I can't really show you because it's awkward, but it, what it looks like is there's maybe two, two or three 10 mil bolts at the top. And then there's this thing here, which is the clutch, which has got safety screws on, uh, which I'm going to take out with spline. So basically, it's got a hole in the middle. I'll show you the tool. Like I said, I'm just going to get this off. It's a T40 torque. Now, that's a normal torque. You can see there's no hole in it. And when you come to a security one, you can see there's a hole in the middle. Now, you do have to be careful because these are obviously a lot weaker. And uh, we can get that in there, turn that off. And that means if you're doing it yourself, well, I'm thinking at the minute, I don't know yet, I'll tell you, that we shouldn't have to do any bleeding. So if you've got no scan tools, you can actually take that off and the system should still be basically contained. What I'm guessing is in here is essentially there's going to be kind of just like a normal slave clutch save cylinder and the motor pushes it down. So um, as long as we don't, you know, uh, take out the actual pipe, the system should be still closed. So I'm going to whip off that, we'll get it on the bench and we'll see what's going on. Okay, I got it off and I was right. As long as you take these two security bolts off at the bottom. Now there is another pipe coming up from the top, but that slave cylinder is now still inside the car. So there's a 10 mil bolt, where are we looking? Kind of at the side and at the top. Sorry, here, there's a 10 mil bolt here. There's a 10 mil bolt there. That just slides out. There's our connections. And just like I thought, inside there is like the pin I, I, I thought it would be. This obviously spins around and pushes down, which pushes down on the clutch. So it's kind of the way I thought it was going to work. As you can see, them pins look absolutely perfect. Now we've got more security bolts to separate the actual motor from the TCM and hopefully I don't know if there's wires or if there's connections because obviously this needs to be powered so I don't know exactly how that works yet. Are we going to be able to separate it without doing damage? Hopefully if there's water in here we're kind of in trouble because it's going to most probably need a new TCM then. I don't know. Is the motor seed? I, I just don't know yet. So let's um, crack this bad boy open and we'll see. So a normal torque won't fit this. This is a five-sided star where a normal torque is six-sided. So bear that in mind. And for those along playing at home, that's what I'm using. Back on one. Now I don't know, is there a daughter board on this? Is it pinned in to the main motherboard? I, I don't know, will this come off? Well, there we go, oh, it's connected. I knew there'd have to be something. Um, there's no water ingress, which is obviously fantastic. And at first looks, that looks perfect. It doesn't seem, appear to be any problems. Now that doesn't mean we don't have a dry solder joint underneath or something, but from first glance, can't smell anything. Um, does this come off? Is that, oh no, that's actually soldered in, so that's not going to come off that side. Will it come off this side? I can't see it coming off this side either. 
two terminals here. Obviously, the motor spins. Now, is the motor jammed? I can't see a way. I've taken off this, and I'm presuming this should come off because how else would you put it together? I can't see the pin. Right, let me see, figure out how to get this separated and then we'll turn the camera back on. Okay, I figured it out. It's very simple. Push down this all the way. Boom, it comes out. So we can actually now, theoretically, test this motor. But you can also test the wires on the board, make sure that. But that visual inspection looks okay. So what I'm gonna do now is the two thicker wires normally are the power on the ground to the motor. You can see a red and a black there, which corresponds to the two outside ones. So technically we should be able to um, power this motor, but before I do that, I wanna take this off and see if there's anything that's not great or not proper. And of course that is a proper torque now, is it? Yeah. Let me get the right size for that and we'll take off this couple. Glued. That's the seal, is it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I think we've just found the problem, people. Are you ready? Boom, look at that. Wow, just look how much dust has come out of there. Oh, that's just release the pin, yeah. So the motor is free. You can see if I spin the motor, is it gonna do it? Is it gonna go back? It was under pressure, but basically if I spin that motor, you can see by hand that going back. But this is covered and burnt you can see it's quite badly burnt there and the brushes of the motor are gone. Wow, so it is a motor issue. There's just dust of all the brushes of the motor. Now I'm gonna see if I can power this because if I spin it by hand you'll see it moving which in turn is now pulling this pin back which will make the clutch not pressed there we go so that's all the way in now. Oh, let me just do that again. So I'll spin it all the way in. By hand, you'll see the pin, see the worm gear down here, spinning the main cog, which is plastic, which you would have thought would be better metal, but I mean, the gear hasn't failed, so it's not the gear's fault. Let me just spin this. Oh, the smell of burnt brushes in here. Now, watch that pin as I let this go. You can see it pop up. So that's now fully pressed the clutch. So if you do any messing like this, you are gonna have to reset the clutch. 
because obviously the computer now thinks it's in a it's in a certain situation where it's not. Can I actually can these be replaced? Because you can bet your life, if I had to get this from Ford, they'd sell you the whole system. They're not just going to sell you this. And theoretically, I suppose I might be able to actually replace them bushes. And there's just, you can't really see, but there's just no meat left on them bushes. And you can see where it's all gone here. Lovely. Let me make a few phone calls, see what I can and can't get, and we'll go from there. And of course, I can't ring anybody because it's dinner time and everyone's off. But as you can see down there, just the crap and dust that's in there is unreal. And like I said, these are the good things about these videos because you can decide what you want to do. I always get grief if I replace something or if I do something. People, oh, you could have just repaired that. I'm not saying you can't just repair, but I've got to think about the customer, reliability, you know, come back on me and all that sort of stuff. It's different when you're doing it yourself. When you're doing and getting paid for something, you have to think of your own reputation and all that sort of stuff. So, and obviously the situation of the customer, I think, you know, in this case, it's best getting new parts. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the power probe on it. I'm just going to see if we can, can control the motor. We can see from the two wires here, which are the thickest, which are the power and ground. But like I said, we can flip between the two. It'll just go up and down or left and right, or forward and reverse, whatever. It doesn't really matter for this case. In this particular one, we can actually set the circuit breaker from 2 amps to 30. Um, this is a big, heavy motor, so I'm just going to bang it straight up to 30 straight away. So what we're going to do is it's now more or less in the middle, I think, of the travel. Let's put the case on because that could give us a false reading. It could just go off on one. So let's see what happens. So put it in here and here and press go. Oh, it went a bit. And now it stopped. And nothing the other way. It's taking the voltage, but it's beeping at me, so that's... Oh, I wonder if she's completely, uh, just let me, uh, it could be completely gone. Turn it, so we'll just do this, we'll spin it in the middle. So I'm just spinning it in the middle of its travel, so I know now. Can I give it power and will it go back this way? There we go. It went back, but I'm wondering, do we have bad? Because when I hit this, if you remember, it didn't work. So I'm wondering, do we have like bad seg segments? Um, will it do it all the time? Now, look at that, won't do anything. I'm pressing the button and now it's beeping at me, right. So, I'll get the meter out, the hierarchy, and what I'm going to do, continuity and resistance, we'll put it on. There we go, that's the bad. So if I twist this by hand, that should go off. There we go, on, off, on, off. On, off, on, off. So that's why when I hit it, it kind of worked. Motor, gone, sorted. Haven't been able to ring the Ford dealer yet because it's still dinner time, but what I have managed to do is get some kind of different ideas. It looks like you can kind of buy similar brushes that will kind of work. It does also look like these can be reconditioned. There's crowds in the UK that recondition these. But again, that's still a problem for me because that's in the UK. So for me to take this and send this away is hassle. And it's, you know, basically a week, two weeks before I get it back. And if even though it's warranted, but if a similar problem happens, the customer is out of the car again for a couple of weeks. So my option, it's looking like at the minute, 
is to see if I can get a new one of these from Forge. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to in the sense of I think they're going to want to put the old TCM in on that too, which bumps the price up from, say, I don't know, I don't know, let's say a couple of hundred euros for this, and it could be seven, eight hundred euros if you put that. Now, that's just a guess off the top of my head. Maybe it's not like that. I don't know. But putting these both together, they can charge a hell of a lot more. So, yeah. That's our issue. We can see that there's bad sections in this. That's why it was an intermittent fault, because obviously, you know, depending on, just like, just like your pump inside your uh, fuel tank, you know, when if it's up, you give it a few bangs, it can kind of move it and keep it working again. So depending on where this motor actually stops, where the clutch presses, is depending if the car says it's good or bad. So yeah, look, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna price up a new part and we're gonna see. Right, sit down before I tell you this. Ford want over 1,200 euros plus fat for a new one of these, which is 1,600, 1,700 euros for one of these. That's obviously out of the question. That's where we are at the minute. New is off the table. Reconditions is the way to go. Second hand is pointless because you're gonna come back to the same situation again. Right, what I've decided to do, I've removed the bushing, or the brush, should I say. As you can see, it's completely gone. Just The spring just wasn't pressing against it anymore. And I've ordered some new ones. Now, the copper graphite, which is the correct type for this, I'm going to have to cut them down because they're not the right size, but that shouldn't really be an issue. You do have to slightly break the metal t or the plastic tab that's on there and just bend the, the metal part out and that slides the bushing out. You also then have to push the pin internally inside there because this is the pin that goes onto the motor here. You can just see it there because this is all the reconditioning guys are gonna do. So I'm gonna get the airline, I'm gonna blow all this out. I'm gonna get some sandpaper and sand the actual uh, motor there just to get it nice and shiny again and uh, wait for the new parts to come tomorrow and try and fit everything, cut it down. I am gonna have to kind of put that groove back in. You can see the bushings aren't exactly dead straight. You can see that there, look. Let's put that shape in, but I'd be able to do that with a file and some sandpaper. Put it back in, put both of them back in, because there's two, and uh, see what happens. That's all we can do. Sorted. I tried filming this. A few seconds for you, a few days for me, and I just can't. I've got one bush in, as you can see. Hopefully you can see that. It's all soldered in. You just see it contacting there with the motor. It's all good. Um, using the old uh, lithium uh, solder and iron from Hubby Tool. Cool. Now, problem is, with the spring and everything, it's just so awkward to try and film all this hold on, in there. It's just so awkward. So I've got that in, and what I'm going to do is, once I've got that in, I'm going to glue this. I'm going to glue this back on there just to stop it. It doesn't really need to, but I'm going to do it just to kind of stop anything moving. Um, but the other one, the last one I've got left is in there, which is even harder. So I just cannot film it. But what I can show you is, this is going to save everyone so much time if you're going to do this job. And if this is your problem, obviously, I'm about to show you the box, the old bushing box that I got, which is very, very, very much bang on. Um, there's a little bit of work to do, but boom. There we go. Six by three by 11 mil so they're basically square um, that's the back of it in case you need to order it and what it looks like a couple of important things to note you need one where the wire is sticking out the back because that's just easier and it has to be square and as you can see it's square and it fits practically straight down in there now it is too long so all I've done is, now this is this particular bushing and this particular sandpaper. This is, I think, 80 grit, but this is old sandpaper. And I've just scraped it down there five times. 
and then I've used a round file just to get a little bit of curve in it, just so it kind of, because it's, it's not exactly on the motor, and once the motor starts spinning, it might be a bit weak at first, and it might not change gear very well and stuff like that until it kind of runs in, but I've got it the best as I can, and then that goes in there. So again, I can't show you that because it's just, I can't film it. I need a couple of people here to actually help me film it because every time I put my hand in the way, it's just getting in the way. Um, so I'm going to do that now, get this in, and, uh, and you can see just, you have to be very, very careful because they really don't take too much to go down. So I've just literally gone like that. And you can see already just how much it takes off it's a lot and then just file it with the uh the file and then that's it once i've got it in we'll turn the camera back on and uh we'll see if it works i took out the cradle that holds a little brush and just be careful there's two little tabs you need to bend back because otherwise it'll just slip back out and that means it's easier to put the spring get the right size and everything and then put it back but it's still too fiddly for me to actually film it but that's the easiest way of getting it back in. You're gonna to struggle to see, but the two bushes are in there now, and the motor still turns, everything's okay. So what we're gonna do now is put the old multimeter back on it and see if it does what it's supposed to do, rather than dropping out as it did before. That'll give us a good indication if it's gonna work or not. I have faith it's going to work because I fixed it. <laughs> now, Put them both back on the pins. Well, that's a good sign. And I'm gonna turn it like I did before. Ha ha! There we go. It's not dropping out, people. It's not dropping out. Beautiful. I'm gonna turn it off because that's gonna get annoying. There we go. Right, what I am gonna do is, because of the way we took this off, we shouldn't have to do anything to do with the clutch or anything. But what I am going to have to do is make sure that this is in the right position because the clutch, obviously the car when I turned it off thought it was in neutral. So I'm going to screw this all the way to the end. Well, actually what I might do is, well, yeah, screw this all the way to the end, put the cover back on it. And then this is ready. There we go. That's all the way to in now. This is ready to put back in, start the car, and boom! All right, all I've done is I've just got the case back on. It's all done. But what I want to do is, remember before we tried to actually power the motor and my, um, my power probe was just bleeping and doing all sorts of stuff. Well, it's actually a snap-on, but it's made by power probe. So what I want to do is I want to actually check it now with everything in just to make sure, well, see if it's working essentially I don't know which way we need to go first that's the wrong way hopefully I put it this way you can see that's the wrong way Leon I that was not working oh, I hope it's the wrong way Whoa, boom boom let's go back how quick it is Boom! Is that, yeah, that's fully in now. Sorted, now we know we're good. I just wanna do that again, just cause, you know, I like it. It's a bit awkward to get it actually on these sometimes. Is that the wrong way? Come on. Boom! I can't press it the other way. <laughs> I think it's time. Boom! You know what this is time for? It's time for the fuck you dance for you people out there. <laughs> oh yeah! 14, 1600 from Ford. We fixed it for like 50p. So yeah, Woohoo! to all the towers out there. <laughs> you might be seeing the fuck you dance quite a lot. Uh, so yes. <clears throat> mm. 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 So what I need to do now is 
put it back together and make sure it works in the car. So what I'm gonna do, no point in me showing you all this, just bolt it back together, make sure the seal is good. Put it back in the car, see if it starts. You'll see it in a couple of seconds. Sorted. So we're now underneath, I've got it in. I've got the clutch mechanism back on. Like I said, we shouldn't really have to do anything with this. Just plug these wires back in and essentially drive. I don't think there's gonna be any relearning procedure. If there is, I'll show you that. I got a bit more information off her. Ford turned around to her and said, there's two motors that they're gonna replace. So it has to be these two motors here. They wanted over 2,000 euros and they said, we think we can fix it. Give us 2,000 euros and we'll give it a go. Um, yeah, I can't do that, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do, well, we've done it now. We're just gonna plug these wires back in. I'm gonna leave them all stripped at the minute because I don't know if there's any other issues. I don't think there is, but you know, someone's been at this before and I just don't know what they've done. Half the clips are not in place and all sorts of stuff. So once I've done that, we'll take it off the lift and we'll take it for a drive. Or will we? We'll see. Right, I'm still on the lift. I haven't cleared any fault. As you can see, the bonnet is still up. We're in neutral. Yep. All I'm gonna do, put my foot on the brake and just turn the key. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho. Right, my foot's still on the uh, brake. So I'll just put it down to neutral, uh, reverse. Okay, right. Will it start? Ho, 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 baby! Now, let me see if I can hear the clicks. Click! Yes! Oh! Oh, yes! Right, let's get it off the lift and take it for a drive. Right, let's go. Well, it moves forward. Can I get out of the yard? This is awkward filming. It's gonna go around the yard first in auto, then I'll take it for a spin on the road. Then we'll turn the camera back on. But at the minute, it's going. Put my foot down, change gear for me. Oh, run out of room. There we go, you've changed gear. Lovely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this for a drive a couple miles up the road and then uh, we'll switch back on. Okay, I literally just took it up and down the road just to make sure it goes through all the gears and it does perfectly in manual and automatic mode. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive this over the next few days because I don't wanna give it back to until I'm 100% sure that everything is fine. And then we'll close out the video uh, over the next few days and we'll see what happens. Right, it's been a few days now. You can see the mileage that's on it. Just gonna go through all the gears. Put on a bit of pressure just to show you. It changes gear. Perfectly. Well, as perfect as one of these gearboxes can be jerky as hell but that's just the way it is and there we go it's absolutely perfect so that's it people it works it's fixed 4,000 euros from Ford uh, I fixed it for like a euro um, the reason why I say that is because the initial price from Ford for 2,000 wouldn't have fixed the problem then they would have had to put the other motors in and it would have been over two grand I'm guessing because the part is 1,600 euros alone so that's it look hope it helps please like share comment and subscribe don't forget links up here links down below but most importantly don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted there we go drops down gear beautifully as well